Yeah, g'day, Scully here. Doing the intro out of the show because they've racked off for the weekend. Ha ha ha. And see where they're going to go. They haven't been away for two years. Put your hat on, sweet. Just put your hat on for a minute. Just a minute. Just put your hat on. Go on. Do it. Do it. I'll get hat hair. Oh, you don't get hat hair. You do. It all sticks up. It's the best hat. Oh, my God. You can't even see me. Hello. I'm in here somewhere. We put your hat on properly. I have. <laughs> All right, we're off, and we're on our way to Mill Merrin, which is um, about here. All righty, we're just going to buzz in right now. We've just made a small pit stop. We've stopped in for a coffee, and we've gone to a store called Hannah's in Toowoomba where I've picked up my wife, her first Akubra, and we got the Milan. So, there she is. What do you reckon about that, honey? Yeah, it's good. I'm just going to sit it right. Yeah. So, anyway, we'll take some adjustment in that, and um, now we're off to Mill Marin, eh? Check out this um, Camp Oven Festival, the 11th. Alrighty, well here we are, we've just arrived at the Australian Camp Oven Festival. We'll get in there, we'll see what's going on, eh? Just gonna take a cruise around and uh, just check out some of the sites, show you some of the ovens, some of the stuff cooking, but we'll have a look, eh? We'll be here for two days, so. Two thirty-six inch ovens, huge. Oh, there's a few more ovens there. Feel the heat coming off these bastards. Alrighty, here's a nice little display of ovens. Nice square loafed in there. A few poikies, different sized poikies. There's a big 25 poiky. Can he do it? For the pride of the local team. Come on over. Check out that big dual skillet. Massive. About as big as yours, Danny. Whoa, look at that. He went all right. Good on you, Isaac. The noise in the background is the old damper throwing contest. There you contest. go, young Isaac. Isaac said, you just come to my town and try and beat me and look out. Come on in the damper comp, eh? <laughs> Check it out. Cheesecake cooking over there by the looks of it. And we've got some lamb cooking in that poiki. That's a foul oh, It's got a good setup oh, it is. Cheesecake, I'll, I'll try a bit of that. Cheesecake? Thank you. Check that out, cheesecake. I'll offer this to the missus. Okay, so it looks like this is where all the all the cooking competition entrances are. How are you fellas? What are you cooking, mate? Where you go? Got a beef curry. Beef curry? Yeah, not a bad effort, Ruby. Well done. Red rolls, up crumble and custard. Sounds good, mate. Sounds real good. Good luck, eh? How are you? Not a bad effort. Well done. In a camp oven. What do you got cooking in there, love? Oh, it's starting a custard. Custard? Yeah. That's what I love about. Excellent. Excellent. You got a nice roarer of a fire back there too. Warm as toast. The boys are on the the boys are on the right substance. <laughs> Excellent. Good luck, eh? Some old camp ovens in there. Some looks like some Albions and that's CNC Harding and that little tiny one there. The boys are going on. They got it all happening. Come on, come You get some pocket rockets there. These guys are in for a good night. Alrighty, let's go check out the rest of this stuff. We'll go to the information centre and see if I can pick myself up a uh, bit of a souvenir, right? Eh? Apparently this is the place to get the um get the ovens. I just bought myself a um a souvenir. Turn that around, festival, Mill Merrin Festival, camp on it.
If you know the words, sing along. It's a John Williams song. <laughs> The people you meet at the camp oven festival, eh? Hey, this fella here, Mick Villa. trucks here and over to me right old Chevy 4x4 you'd appreciate where we're going now mate we've got some old pumps working see Ranger Nick have his show so we'll hang around for that eh? We're at the Australian Camp Oven Festival October 5th and 6th in Milmarin, Queensland. You haven't any trouble? <laughs> well you're in the right place mate aren't you? <laughs> what I'd like to do, especially for those that are having a bit of trouble, and I can nearly guess what the trouble is, you overheat the oven and burn and everything right? You have done that. Looks like you get the food here. Never trust a skinny foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. What I'd like to try and do for those today that are having a bit of trouble, and believe it or not, you already have the knowledge to cook in the fire. You know exactly what to do. Yeah? Are you aware of that? Obviously not, you're burning the food. <laughs> what I'd like to do is take the knowledge that you already have and use in your kitchens on a daily basis. So what you do in your kitchen at home, I want you to refer to that stuff that you do at home. So when you cook a roast at home, you crank the oven up to 200 degrees, chuck the lump of meat in, sear it for half an hour to three quarters of an hour, and then turn the oven down to around 120, 140 degrees. Let it cook for an hour per kilo. Sound about right? Yeah. Right up there. No knob on the tear button, is there? <laughs> what happens to the coals once I put them on the lid or on the, on the oven? What's happening to those coals? They burn them out, aren't they? They're reducing. I don't need to turn them off. You already knew that, didn't you? You see what I'm saying there? You're using charcoal briquettes and you're still burning the food. <laughs> Jesus, mate. We've got a talk. <laughs> charcoal briquettes are uniform and consistent. Would you like a simple rule of thumb to get you on the right track? Okay. Range your next rule of thumb for charcoal briquettes. Take two out two. Measure the diameter of your camp oven. 12 inch oven. Yeah. Take two out two. 10 under. 14 on the lid. That's going to cook most things you want to cook. Sound about right? Yeah. yeah. If you'd like to know more about that, I've, I've, in the past years here I've been demonstrating with briquettes as a learning tool. Yeah? And you can use them in national parks or caravan parks where you generally can't light a fire. They do, however, need to be at least 200 off the ground and contained. We're all familiar with fire pits, aren't we? Alright. So the first thing I want you to do now is turn on your senses. The daily grind, going to work, or your daily things you do, you seem to just shut down and you forget to turn your senses on. You miss out on the songbirds when they sing and the wildflowers when they bud. It's not a nice way to live life, is it? So turn on those senses when you get out around the campfire. We have six senses, is that correct? Yes. 
No, oh, we're getting smarter now. <laughs> so what's the, what's the six cents I'm talking about? Right, now we're all thinking. We've got some that were in the crowd yesterday, obviously. So turn those sensors on. Now if I'm looking, if I'm uh, watching the camp oven, refer to the knowledge you have, go back to the kitchen. If I'm watching the camp oven, what might I be watching for? Well, I'd be watching for smoke. Ideally, I don't want to see smoke. If there's smoke billowing out of my oven at home in the kitchen, what's that telling you? It's too hot. You're burning it. It's too hot. If I'm seeing steam puffy up from under the lid, what might I smell? Flavour. The pleasant aroma of the food cooking, correct? And what might I hear? A sizzling sound. Absolutely, it's nice sizzling sound. As my oven is home though. I'm seeing steam. I'm smelling the food. And I'm um, hearing that nice sizzle. Okay. Doing everything my oven at home does. You reckon I'm on the right track? Good, let's go fishing. <laughs> you can walk away now from that camper. Yeah. What about touch? I certainly don't recommend you touch hot camp ovens. They're going to reach temperatures over 200 degrees. However, that's exactly what I do. So as I said to you earlier, from a young boy, that's how I picked up the techniques, or that's how I learned to do this, is through touching the oven. So at the back of my hand, I touch the side of the oven, all oh, my knuckles are stuck to the side, too hot. <laughs> If I can just touch it and not hold my hand there, I find that's a pretty good thing. Remember, first half an hour trigger the steering time. <laughs> now, some people I see, they'll set their camp oven, load it up with coals, and again, sensitive parts of your body. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll do this funny little... <laughs> yeah, have you seen it? You would have done it, a lot of you. <laughs> But that's how they get familiar with the heat. So whatever works for you. And on that note, if you're doing things with your camp ovens, and it's different to what I do, but you're getting good results, I recommend that you don't, pardon me, you don't fix what isn't broken. Keep doing what you're doing. If you're getting good results, there's no need to change. Yeah? Certainly give it a go. And if the techniques you're using are simpler than what I show you here today, would you please come and tell me, show me, because I'm the laziest bastard you ever wish to meet. If there's an easy way of doing something, I would like to know. That gives me more time to fish, hunt, do anything on the outside to do. Okay, we'll come back to the camp oven because we haven't even lit a fire yet. All the time, we never part. So hello, Mary Lou, a goodbye. I say hello, Mary Lou, a goodbye. That's right. So today, Luke and I are going to get in and build a little bit of bush furniture, which is going to be a rustic bar. So we're just going to warm up here with one that we call a snake killer, I mean snake relocator. Snakes are actually protected uh, these days, so we had to rename this one a snake relocator. This will be pretty loud in under the tent. Now. We'll see you later, eh? That was the Camp Oven Festival, the 11th, 2018. So every two years. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your mates, eh? Roger D, Dickie Knee.